Thank you very much, Deputy Presiding Officer. I'd like to start by echoing the thanks of the Chamber, both to Claire Hawhey and to the Everyone's Business Campaign for securing parliamentary time for us to debate this important issue today. Welcome to the best club in the world. Your life is going to change, but only in good, word, in good ways. These are some of the utterances that come from society whenever you're expecting a, a child. And it's not surprising then that with such a weight of societal expectation around pregnancy and parenthood, that it's very difficult for mothers to come forward and admit that they're not necessarily coping or not enjoying things in the way that they thought they might. And, and it, yet, for all too many mothers, that is the reality. It is, as such, a hidden issue very much in our mental health landscape, and I'm very glad we are airing it today, because like many other mental health issues, it is a spectrum. You can have it very severely or, or very mildly. It can be anxiety or depression. It can be OCD and leading to post-traumatic stress disorder and, and real psychosis in, in some extreme cases. It happens during pregnancy or after pregnancy. And I want to take a moment to recognize a group that isn't often mentioned in debates like this. And that, that's for uh, those who miscarry. Because uh, my sister, Ro, who's in the gallery uh, this afternoon, is one such person. She miscarried in 2016 and then suffered mental health issues directly after. And she's allowed me to share her words with the chamber this afternoon. She said, it hurts so much along with the feelings of guilt and failure at not successfully bringing my baby into the world, there was a chemical change that I didn't understand or expect. Rosie is among many mothers who, and or would be mothers who suffer in this way and we need to do far, far more for them. It is that tension between the stigma of not wanting to put your hand up and say that you're not coping, which gets in the way of identification. It's why that first six week check that every mother, new mother goes through uh, is all important, but it means nothing if our doctors, our midwives, our health visitors are not adequately trained in understanding what those early warning signs are for, for people that aren't just aren't coping or, or might need a little bit of extra support. That's why we, we urgently need to rectify that and make it as a matter of course that people are adequately trained in perinatal mental health issues. But once we identify these women, and we do them a profound disservice if we can't stand that recognition up with adequate service provisions in the communities and in the hospitals in their locale. And we know that not only, uh, less than half of mothers are served by adequate perinatal mental health facilities or services either in their communities or local hospitals. I am uh, intensely proud to have been involved with Abelair at the time that they started their perinatal befriending service in Porth Valley. And all told, that has helped 160 mothers in that area since it started three years ago. But there's no guarantee that they will be able to sustain that when the funding goes. And we need actually to mainstream services like that right across the family, so, uh, the country, so that there isn't that postcode lottery. But the worst, I think, comes when we talk about inpatient provision, because we in this country have only 12 beds on any given day available to mothers and their babies to come in for perinatal mental health support. 12 beds. If those beds are full, mothers are directed to adult services and they can't take their babies with them. So not only are we compounding mental turmoil of the, the chemical changes going on in their brains, but we're compounding that with the separation anxiety of having to remove a child from the, the situation as well. It, it's, it, this has to be the nexus of where we take this agenda. It, it is absolutely critical. So I want to finish by once again thanking Claire Hawhey for this time to, to raise this debate um, and for the campaign because I think it's very easy for us to let these women drift back into the shadows and just try and muddle through and carry on regardless. But they are, they are looking to this chamber for answers and it's time we woke up to that. Thank you.